Just to start off, I'd like to give you an idea about the sizes we'll be discussing in this talk. Of course, the universe is a gigantic place, but there's also an almost equally tiny world right under our noses. I'll start by telling you something obvious. The Earth is very large, about 12.74 million meters in diameter to be exact. By comparison, the average human stands about uh, 1.7 meters or about uh, 7.5 millionths the size of the Earth. The hair on our head is usually about 100 microns wide, a micron being one millionth of a meter. When talking about cells, we're now getting down into the range of about 10 microns, far smaller than anything you could see without a microscope. Being uh, 10 millionths of a meter, uh, they are as small to us as we are to the Earth. Just a little bit smaller than that are what I'll be talking about today, something my, one might call a nano robot. Our first design was about eight microns long, and our most recent design is a little more than 10 times smaller than that at about 500 billionths of a meter. We're still pretty far away from single atoms though, which are only about uh, 0.1 billionths of a meter wide. And I'll start off uh, talking about how they work with a quick analogy. Maybe uh, when you get home at the end of the day, especially during the pandemic, the first thing you might at least think about reaching for is a glass of wine. If you're fidgety like me, you might give it a tap and listen to the sound that it makes. If you do that enough times or with enough things, you'll realize that no matter how hard you hit it or what you hit it with, you always get the same note coming from it. This is what's called a resonance frequency and is essentially the conversion of mechanical energy from one form to another. When you shake the glass of wine by tapping it, it can only release that energy as sound and can only vibrate happily at one note or frequency. And believe it or not, the, the opposite is true as well. You really can break a glass of wine with your voice if you hit the perfect note, as that glass will absorb those vibrations and begin to shake significantly. Weirdly similar in shape and concept to the wine glass are our nano robots, which are simply a magnetic shell in which we've trapped a bubble of air. We do this with a water-fearing layer of molecules, think like a nonstick coating on a pan that keeps water from entering the shell and preserves the water or the air inside. The shell is made of either plastic or glass with a thin layer of magnetic nickel and the gas bubble within. Just like the wine glass in reverse, we can shake the bubble with sound, ultrasound to be exact, uh, at its resonance frequency, uh, which causes it to shake and push the water around it. We can monitor the fluid flow actually by looking at tiny particles and how they move when we turn on the ultrasound proving that this concept works. And again, this is all with medical range ultrasound, similar to what you would get uh, with a sonogram at a hospital. Our first design was prepared by a laser printing technique that uses a laser focused through a microscope to 3D print at the cellular level. We can print up to 40,000 at a time, the only disadvantage being how long it takes to print them and the fact that we can't go any smaller than this due to the inaccuracy of the laser. We overcame these limitations with a simple templating and growth method, which essentially allows us to make extremely tiny holes, fill them with a the glass material, remove the template, coat with our magnetic nickel, and cover with our nonstick layer to trap our bubbles. Both of these types of swimmers can simply be scratched from, um, from the template and added to surfaces with a syringe of water uh, to do the experiments I'll be showing you. Now, because of the way the ultrasound bounces off of solids, the robot actually stands to attention when we begin to power it because it is attracted to the surface on which it sits. This gives them extremely fast and tunable maneuverability when you tilt a small magnet and tell them which way to turn. We're also very impressed to see how incredibly fast they move when you crank up the power, reaching upwards of 2.5 millimeters per second at the fastest. Being only eight microns long, um, this is moving uh, 300 times its own length per second. And to put that in perspective, if a cheetah could do the same thing, it would uh, be able to run over a thousand miles per hour. We also see that much like the wine glass or actual musical instruments like bells and xylophones, our robots can work separately using different ultrasound frequencies. Just like the xylophone, smaller things have a higher pitch while big things have a lower pitch. In the same way, our small robots can move at higher frequencies without affecting the bigger robots, which move at a lower frequency, allowing us to operate two at the same time without interference. When we wanna actually use them for something, 
Um, a good example is just to push things around like these tiny particles I threw in with them. But it turns out that pushing things is really hard and slow. Much easier is picking things up and dragging them to new, to new locations, which we can do because uh, the robot is attracted to solid particles, just like it's attracted to the solid surface. Uh, just for fun and just to impress you guys, uh, I thought I would make my own fun pattern uh, with some particles that I threw in uh, with our robot. Uh, this took me about five minutes, but I sped it up for clarity. And after a little bit of adjustment, you might notice that this is actually the pen logo. So give yourself on a, a pat on the back if you notice that. So why should anybody care about this? For one thing, they're extremely biocompatible because of the way we power them with ultrasound. And because we can pick things up and put them down in new locations, we can imagine grabbing cells and relocating them for all sorts of different applications. We can also tell that this method is biocompatible uh, by using a, a fluorescent green dye. The fact that the dye doesn't change after an hour tells us that um, uh, our robots and the way that we move uh, the cells with them is not acutely toxic. Where we envision this going is to study diseases at the cellular level. All diseases must start somewhere and understanding how they grow, spread, and communicate with healthy tissues is extremely important for understanding diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, and early developmental disorders. Imagine taking tiny organs when we, where we can use our robots to create diseases one cell at a time, allowing us to see how that disease spreads and behaves in very controlled environments. Uh, we can even imagine moving those cells to new locations uh, to create organ systems and environments that were previously impossible. And not, last but not least, uh, we approach the question of developing nanorobots capable of swimming freely in the body. Ultrasound imaging is basically the process of sending sound into the body and listening for what comes back, like an echo. Because our bubbles reflect ultrasound very strongly, the echo they produce is very powerful and visible with ultrasound. While we're, while we're still uh, far away from imaging anything but this tube, uh, we're hoping to move on to animals soon and start approaching real applications. Uh, perhaps uh, single cell surgery or something crazy uh, in science fiction-y. So with that, I'll end my talk by saying that we're excited for all the things to come and that we welcome any questions uh, via email. Um, so thank you uh, for your time.